Yeah, okay, he's loading up the pictures. All right, we got 530. Ann's going to lead us. Me? Mm -hmm. oh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilty. Here. Brenda Simmons. Here. Craig Scott. Here. Any additions or corrections to the agenda, commissioners? I have a couple of things. Go ahead. Uh, we have a... We have a candidate for deputy that we approved a little bit ago, and there's some updates about the academy. And uh, I guess Hunter's here is going to help help with this. And the second one is uh, I want to talk about uh, handicap accessibility into the county building. I guess I might as well add in one. Go ahead. Um, the sheriff's going to uh, discuss current staffing issues with the jail. Anything else? No. Are you going to share anything about the DDA and the emails and the conversation back and forth or no? I hadn't planned to, but we can talk about it. If we, we'll see where we're at. We'll see, we'll see where we're at as far as time goes. Well, we're going to put them. What is the name? Craig put on. Uh, e, F, and G. Okay, what's E? Candidate for deputy. F is handicap accessibility, and G is staffing issues. Any other additions or corrections? Item. Well, actually, I, <laughs> I should have been more specific. I think that conversation that from the undersheriff should be coincided with C or before the jail. And that, that's fine. I mean, C we're not going to indicate, something. we're not going to stop that. That's fine. <clears throat> Thanks. Public comment. Any public comment in the room on agenda items only? Any public comment on the phone? Item four appointments. Leanne, come on up. I printed off uh, some information for you that I'm going to go over with you briefly. And it's in regard to the grant that I would like the Board of Commissioners to um, approve the resolution for me to do this on your behalf. Do you want one? Board Thank has you. It first. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, what they said is that these are CDBG dollars. They had it available earlier this year, but I had already had the MI Hope program that was awarded to us for $262,000. They had $60 million available earlier this year. And their application, um, I didn't really review it because we had enough grant money that we needed to spend that first. And we're getting down. Uh, we're about 75% committed on our time. Um, so with the $60 million, they have it down to $30 million. Now they have it available for statewide for anybody to apply for. Those that apply for are local units of government or nonprofits. Um, and then they divided the state up in region. And that's how they determine how much grant money is available for each region. I did um, make a copy of the map, which you should have that, the second page or third page, and it shows the region that you are in. You are in region E, and the amount that we started out with is $1,500,000. That is down to $752,000 just for our region. That's why I want to go ahead and get that $200,000 before it's gone. Um, this money is also available 18% admin dollars for me to be able to administer it on your behalf. Um, I got my notes here. There are 
free activity that is in there. I want you to go toward um, the next part. Hopefully I got it right here. This is rehab, which is in back of the map. And then there's also another list of all the grant money. So the rehab part is the one that I would like to go for and use that money, which is what we continue to do right now. So I want to continue the program that way. The next thing. The next activity they have is public amenity, and I don't feel that we should go for that um, because these funds will come available again. And then maybe we can talk about public amenity to go with we have. I have done one. Um, and then new units, which is like um, new construction, and that is very cost prohibitive. To, cost prohibitive. Uh, because it, it costs a lot of money. And I'd rather avoid that because I'm not, um, I don't have the expertise in that area. Mm -hmm. I, I just rather stay with homeowner rehab and maybe an amenity. Right. Um, so with that, um, with this program, it's 80% AMI, which is what currently we do right now. Uh, with our program income that we have available. And also with the HPG dollar, if we go up to 80%. And maximum subsidy with this CDBG dollar is $40,000 per unit. And what they do is that MISHA is the one that holds the lien on it. So I don't ever have to worry about it. We got enough right, in, in our um, case. We got over $1.8 million that we are maintaining in mortgages currently. And this money gets recycled. So we're always going to have $1.8 million. So I'm never going to have to worry about that. So Mission takes care of it. And what they provide is a five year non prorated forgivable lien for the full amount over $10,000. They don't say, what they do with any under $10,000. They talk about over $10,000. So this is all up to MISHA to handle that portion of it. We just get the admin, admin fee for administering the program on your behalf. The admin fee comes through the through the grant dollars. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's no cost to you guys. They never is. No, I make sure that don't happen. That's great. You're, you're looking for a resolution for us to give you approval to go after this this additional funding, correct? Yeah. Absolutely. Questions, comments? I have a statement. Go ahead. I just feel I've told you this before, but we're really blessed to have you and thank you for your hard work. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any anything else, commissioners? No. Thank you, Leanne. You're welcome. Discussion item, item 5A, Department of Treasury grant for supplemental internal control procedures. Okay. A couple of years ago, we uh, received a grant from Treasury very similar to this to begin the basic uh, groundwork to formalize our internal control policies. Uh, the result of that, each department received a series of suggestions on how to be in compliance with best practices. Uh, and was, uh, I thought, very helpful because it really enabled us to get our minds around all the departments that were handling cash on our behalf and uh, get a general idea of what was happening after the cash was received. Uh, you may recall in this last audit, there was mention of uh, T-shirts and the sales of those T-shirts and the accounting for that. Uh, we've had challenges uh, with the process of bringing funds in from the Deer Park and how consistent that that should happen and what, what paperwork we need to see. So this next step that we proposed with this grant would formalize those steps, literally put procedures together for each one of these departments that's handling cash, be it for collecting t-shirts or deer feed or the RV park or anything else. And a lot of departments collect fees. Uh, this would formalize it not only uh, for us internally, but then we would also have the assurance that what we're doing is compliant with uh, generally accepted accounting practices, something that will be 
looked upon uh, by our auditors as proper procedures so that they can verify it too. The uh, Treasury is offering to uh, provide us with a grant of 18400 uh, to do this, that would be 80%. So we would need to match that with uh, roughly $5,000, which we have in contingency now. And I would um, hope that uh, we would be willing to accept this. The um, actual memorandum of agreement with Treasury arrived uh, yesterday or today. So you know, I was able to update the information on your iPad. So we actually can see that uh, it's not an exciting read that just says that we will go ahead and provide the 18.4. Uh, and it gives us the process for uh, uh, recovering those dollars and sending invoices to the state. So I'm hoping to get your approval, uh, put a resolution on next Thursday to accept this. Comments? Uh, Commissioner Simmons? No. Commissioner Scott? Yeah. Uh, would we probably get Maynard Costerman again or one like that. Yeah, we do mean in fact Mainer's actually written into the agreement with uh, Treasury to do that. And you know that certainly makes sense. They they were the ones that provided the original groundwork for us. Uh, and they already know the system fairly well. Yep. How many years ago was that? I was gonna say two or three. It was yeah it was in the four, the first year of this last term. Sorry. Um, so it'd be three and a half years ago that we close to Three years ago, initiated probably. Yeah. I mean, is it not, is this adding on to that previous? It is. So the previous, you know, think of the previous as sort of the outline for the procedures that'll get developed now, but the procedures will be very specific. So if we're taking money in for, uh, keep picking on the deer part, but if there are you know, donations that are received in that uh, box for the deer feed, yeah, put in their dollar or whatever it is, and they feed the deer. Right. What happens to that? We're, and we're working out. on the lockbox concept exactly. right now. Right now, exactly. But it's establishing that for every location that's accepting money exactly. on behalf of the county, and it absolutely locks down. Yeah, you, know, you can follow that dollar as soon as it enters somebody's hand where it goes or where it's supposed to be anyway. Uh, which again, procedures we have never had. Mr. Uh, Wilsey, no, I'm fine. What do you think, Mr. Mayor? What happens if we don't? If we don't take the grant, the work isn't going to get done. Well, it's don't. getting done. Um, we have identified, um, shall we say, weak points in several systems. The one I mentioned with the T-shirt sales was mentioned by our auditors. There was a finding a few years ago about uh, something to do with firearms that were turned in, or I forget exactly what it was. Right, but we addressed that. We did, but there's no process that you can point to today that says this is how we're going to handle all of these. And that, that one issue probably is fixed now. Uh, but then we have you know, our Deer Park issue. We've had issues with receipts brought in at the RV park and you know receipts missing. Now, why were they missing? Well, they were probably voided out, but we don't know that. There's just a missing receipt. So it's things like that that... Um, for checks and balances, uh, it gives us more confidence that we, we're seeing the flow of monies where they're supposed to be, allows us to track them. Uh, and also a new employee coming in will be handed the process. Here's how we process this money. This is what you do with it. Uh, and again, these are just like user manuals, if you will, that we just don't have right now. I mean, it's a valid, valid point. It's $5,000 that we still have to... Uh spend right um i agree with checks and balances i agree with internal control but i guess um right now we're we're tight on funds i in the long run if it could help us find ways to do things correctly and save money but initially right now what's the turnaround where we would get the 18 for back do we know the reimbursement yeah, the reimbursement comes as we are billed or whatever service it is, we turn that into the state and they reimburse us. So there's not like a deadline that's gotta be by this date. It's as we incur the cost, we send the invoice to the state for reimbursement. I don't think last time we paid out of pocket for all that. Or was there, I don't think there was a grant for that. We did, there was a treasury match. Oh, there was? Well. Yeah. Right. And since they have us over about 12,000, if I remember. Well, what is it? It's something like, I know you just, said two or three, but we identified something like 13 or 14 different channels of cash coming in. 
each department had a just about every department line for just about every department in the in the county building takes some type of cash right so whether it be a and we had a bit or... we had 14 different channels of it and we handled in 14 different ways and right that was identified by audits and through the years we didn't change because that's the way we always done it Right, but this was addressed in 2021 and 2022. Yeah, yeah. Did you have something further, Tim? You were kind of interrupted. Okay. I just think it's a it's a good opportunity to get this. We have saved on that contingency all year. We've been doing very well on that because that was to me the fund balance. So uh, that's what I kept my eye on. No processes we got to have. Animal control millage. Let's we'll see that on the resolution. Okay. We'll do resolution on this one. Right. Okay. So you're you're saying we have something for it now? I have saying, pardon me. Let me look here. Are you to the animal control millage? You're talking about it now. Correct. Right? Yes. So what scenario are you guys going with? Tim, are you going to take the floor here? I can. Um, I don't know if it's the last meeting or the one before. We had uh, Nesta put together some scenarios. One uh, that would be a budget for animal control at the uh, same staffing level that we've had up until the recent resignation of our animal control, control officers. That would be a scenario with one part time animal control officer. 25 hours a week and would include a budget uh, line item for the animal care that we uh, discussed at, with the last millage for the, uh, the care of animals that are brought in. Scenario number two is the same thing, only that animal control officer would be a full-time employee. Scenario number three, you would have one full-time and one part-time animal control officer. So each progression you're increasing by a half an FTE uh, in each one of these scenarios. Working out these rough budgets, and what the rough uh, number of millage would bring in to do scenario one, we could do with two tenths of a mill. Scenario number two would be 0.254 mills and scenario three would be 0.282. Uh, so that's where it stands. So the blanks that you see on the proposed language, uh, but that's where we would fill in the dollar amounts based on whatever uh, millage rates you, you were comfortable with. And would also have to talk about the duration of the millage. You know, typically, you're at four years. Some of our millages are at six. There is no right or wrong answer to that. You could theoretically do it for one year if you wanted to. Uh, but that would be a conversation that we'd have to have before we could submit anything to the clerk. Uh, the <clears throat> deadline to do this is uh, following the meeting on Thursday. So between now and Thursday, a decision would have to be made. Well, obviously, it'd be Thursday. Um, board meeting where you would uh, decide on the resolution and then we would uh, automatically move that to the clerk to meet the deadline. Does anybody have questions um, related to the scenarios? Commissioner Simmons. Um, well, there is uh, some leeway in there because some of these, some of these uh, figures um, may be a little off and we don't know until we have it for a year what these figures are really going to be. And uh, I don't know. I think we should go with number one. Commissioner Mayo? Status quo. Yeah, I can. <laughs> that guy left because he was a kid. He wasn't going to have a job. We don't have the money for the other two, no way. I'm shocked by looking at these at uh, the animal care of $200,000. That's that budget we were talking about with the last millage. Um, that's what was projected that would be needed to do that. So I've done no other research on it. I just plugged that number in. Mr. Scott? The people said no about the animal shelter and uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't see any point in going any farther ahead with this. Commissioner Walty? Well, I think we've we've seen it. I've had a lot of people talk to me about their concerns since we had our animal control officer resign. I think it's important that we have animal control 
but I think this is just an example of what we have as a county government smacking us right in the face. Millage, 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 millage. Why are we asking this? Because financially we're broke. This is why we have to fix this financial issue of this county so we don't have to keep asking for millage and millage and millage for items that our county residents need. Scenario one. I agree with uh, scenario one out of the three, and, and I think the public has a right to uh, assist with this decision. Commissioner Simmons. Uh, there's a miss, there's a lot of misinformation that was giving out. I mean, I didn't want to meet to people say, oh, that's just for this. And I said, no, it doesn't say anything about any animal shelter. Didn't mention animal shelter, but yeah, that's for any animal shelter. And I'd show them the ballot and I said, well, show me where it says that. Oh, I guess it doesn't say there. People were reading into that millage. They're reading stuff into it that wasn't even there. So, and I know there are sheriffs probably receiving a lot of calls about stray animals running here and there and everywhere. And uh, I think it would behoove us to uh, put this back on to uh, alleviate all the calls the sheriff's department's getting and they could go to animal control. So the animal control officer still be on the same amount of hours he was before. And uh, we have to see, uh, um, what the people want, you know. I I tried again in November, and if they want status quo like it is right now, no animal control. Just let the animals run around the neighborhood. That means they've spoken. That's what they want. It's not a mandated service. Um, and the point too is is uh, reasonable. I think it is. As far as time, um, I say four years. That's 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 I'm my opinion, Commissioner Simmons. If we had it, if we had it for two years, this is just talking now. That means it would come back when the governor is back up for re-election, right? And then after that, put it for four years, then it would come when the governor's up for election and not when the presidential election is. Just a thought. Why what's your rationale there? So all the militias don't come on all at the same day. Well, that's same, fair. same time. You know, if we do it now too. And then we do it after for four, then that would be when the governor's elected. Right now, everything's coming with a presidential election. I'd like to move some of this so it would come when the when the governor's going to be elected. I don't think it's going to matter. I, you're gonna have a... I don't think it's going to matter. I think that in two years from now, you guys are going to want to put any question that pops up in front of us on a millage to ask the people to make up their minds what it is. People put us up here to make some decisions and I think in well, the gonna year cycle, yeah. you're going to put a bunch of millages up with and with the contention that they have to tell us. I think the ultimate decision is ours. Um, whether this millage passes or, I mean, I, it doesn't pass whether we fill this position or not. So, I, I mean, I don't disagree with you, what Just you're saying, comment. but Just a comment. the ultimate decision is ours to make. Time frame was the question. Um, I'm, I'm fine with two or four. I prefer to be like I was saying, I prefer to like to use this as maybe just a small stimulus so we can get back this important entity and we financially get situation in check and then we can use our county residents money for important items like this and not have to have a millage. We don't. If we get to that point, we don't have to close the village too. Correct. So, Commissioner Mayhew, two or four. Two is fine. So we got uh, two for two, and he's lead the way. So I guess two years. You didn't have an opinion, correct, Commissioner Scott? Oh, I'm not in favor of it. Okay. No millage. Okay. Um, last meeting, uh, we discussed a meeting they're wanting to look at some different scenarios. So just to walk through this, and you do have hard copies out here uh, tonight to look at as well. Uh, and realize sometimes it's easier to fix your page and try to find it on the iPad. Just to explain the format of these three scenarios, uh, the first page on scenarios one and two, 
are just showing you the general fund and the impact of pulling the jail out of the general fund and setting up a special fund like we did with the road patrol millage. So if we were gonna do a millage uh, for uh, the jail, that's what we do. I, I don't know what that number would be for that fund yet, but roughly these are what the budgets would look like. Under scenario number one, this would be a millage, uh, assuming it's approved, and we'll continue to operate the jail at the staffing level that it is today. Now, today's staffing level is down five positions than what it was in 2023. So scenario number two puts those five positions back into the mix. And so it is staffed as though uh, same as it was in 2023. And you can see the difference in the budget uh, that that makes. Working through the numbers, and again, these are you know best guess, if you will, on what these uh, numbers would look like, assuming staffing levels are, are rather uh, uh, benefits are remaining the same and so forth, uh, what these uh, different budgets would look like. So moving down, and I'm going to work off from the scenario number one, just to, for explanation, but scenario number two is set up the same way. Uh, I've shown you all of the different funds that are connected to the jail right now. So we do have a local corrections officer training fund. Uh, that uh, that's exactly what it says, helps pay for training for our corrections officers. We have our jail bond payment that's in there. We have the commissary fund that we're all familiar with. And then finally, we have the actual corrections or the jail budget itself. If we were to go with the millage to fund at the current fiscal year 24 level and including the jail bond debt into that calculation, to fully fund the jail, you're looking at a question of about 2.3672 mills. If we were to fund at the uh, fiscal year 23 level, again, any five positions back, we would be at a 2.7073 request. And that's just, again, with no, uh, uh, no change, but uh, scenarios that I presented do also include a 20% fund balance for the new jail fund. And that would be there to help cover any unexpected costs that might come up with operating the jail at any given time. Now, other variables to consider. You may not want to include the jail bond debt in this. You may wanna just leave it uh, uh, being funded the way it is. You could subtract then 383,963 from the proposed budget. Likewise, if you wanted a lower fund balance, if you felt 20% was too high, I mean, that number could be lowered. Another thing you could do, given where we are today, I mean, we're looking at uh, uh, you know, budget just north of 2 million that's being paid out of the general fund right now, you may decide that, well, the general fund will continue to put 1 million into this, and that could potentially cut your millage request in half. Uh, just by continuing to fund with general fund dollars. So those are all the variables to consider on scenarios one and two. Scenario number three, and I really wanna emphasize this, if, if there's a millage on the ballot and we're gonna to continue to fund the jail uh, at its current uh, level until we have an answer on the millage, that means we're committing to fund the jail for September, October, I'm sorry, for October and November uh, and because we would have obligations about providing notice and so on, you're into December funding. Uh, suddenly, uh, you know, there are expenses that we would know that we would have to incur in the fiscal year 25 budget. So scenario number three assumes the millage is defeated and provides you with what the general fund jail budget would look like. And the, uh, the very bottom of that second page, uh, you know, the current... Um, uh, recommended budget has uh, something no north of about $450,000 in surplus to help start building that fund balance back up uh, to fund the jail at the current levels for those uh, first few months of the year. That number would be down to 268000 or roughly 2.5% fund balance. And I want to remind you that the budget that's recommended right now uh, in deference to our position with bargaining, does not yet include any type of increase for any employee compensation outside of the steps that we already see. So we already know that surplus, uh, if there's going to be, uh, you know, depending on the outcome of negotiation, is probably already going to be reduced. So in effect, we end up in a scenario that we uh, 
maintain status quo, if you will, on that fund balance. Any fund balance that we would see would be very minimal, most likely under that scenario. If the millage passed, obviously that's gonna have a very positive impact on that, as you can see by the numbers uh, on the first two scenarios. So that's where we are. Now we had a conversation, I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit on the agenda. We had a conversation at the law enforcement committee that I think um, uh, as you start discussing these options that you really need to hear about the current staffing levels and where things are headed. And I don't know how you wanna handle this. If you wanna deal that with the committee, do you wanna bring Paul up to talk Let's about that? Let's bring the sheriff and sheriff up, please. I think this is all coincides together so hi everyone hi you guys got the floor well with with, with the hard truth of, of the discussions closing the jail um we are having now uh, it's affecting our staffing levels and when i say that one of them's resigned moved on I've got another one that is uh, aggressively looking, um, and, and this individual is the backbone basically to our jail. We'll pick up all the overtime, pick up the slack whenever we need it. So that individual is looking aggressively. So they're trying to beat the curve is what they're trying to do. Then I got another another one going on Family Leave Act mid-August here. So um that's where we're at now. Our, our staffing levels are going down because of the chatter. Um, and if, it, if we lose one more, we're probably gonna have to do an emergency situation by moving inmates out for safety reasons for them because we don't have the safety. You know, we're, we're operating at a, at a minimum staffing right now. And if we continue losing people, it is just very, very unsafe for the inmates and also our employees. So that's where we're at now. Um, unfortunately, uh, that, that's some bad news for all of us. And what's gonna happen is, is uh, our administration secretary volunteered to step up in, into one of some of these roles. But what it's gonna do, it's gonna create overtime you know, to, to fill them ships because we have to be there for the safety of our inmates. So that's where we're at. Under Sheriff, do you have anything to add? No, he's, he's hitting the right point. So with the redu reduction in staffing to the current levels or a bare minimum staffing for officer safety, inmate safety, liability at the staff, at, at the inmates, we've been fortunate enough that the core group of our employees over at the corrections are professional and dedicated enough that they've stayed with us as we, as we struggle through this whole conversation of what the end result of this is gonna look like. That's not happening anymore. It was brought up at the budget committee, we had another member of the budget committee and what the sheriff said is true. Uh, we, you've all seen the power form that went through the, the one correction officer left during his exit interview, it was for the best of him and his family because of the uncertainty. We have another employee that's gonna be leaving on FMLA, uh, which is right, the right thing to do, but that takes our staffing levels dangerously low. And with the employees now thinking about what's best for them, which they have to do for their families and that type of thing, we're faced with a situation where overtime is gonna go through the roof if we can fill the overtime coming forward with these positions that have happened. And then if we lose another body, we can't safely operate that. And now we're gonna to have to face even tougher situations type of city where we might have to house out for a period of time until we can find staffing. We have nobody in the applications or in reserve like we did before when we got up to full staff. Even with the reduction, we still had uh, some people that we, we are fortunate enough, we had two people come back from layoff and the recall. You know, they, they felt it was a good position that they came back to the position of working correction. We currently have two that have a letter out to them to come back in the current circumstance. I do not believe that either one of the, those employees are going to accept recall. Uh, the 10 days will be done here shortly. So, Do you guys, uh, I know you guys just got out of a law enforcement meeting. Um, do you guys have a solution um, for this? budget 
have one? A solution? I, I... Yeah, we're talking about a millage. I, I guess what are, what are you guys proposing? What 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 is your ideas? The problem I see is that we have to wait for that millage, and I don't know if we can wait. I think our staffing is going to be exiting. That's where I see it. <clears throat> so how are they going to pass the millage anyway? That's another question. That's, I hear that left and right, what that number is going to be. You know, we talked at the, the meeting is $100,000 in housing. We can see if we can get a collection of the agency to make a huge dent in that to change it. But is that going to, is that going to change the circumstances that we're facing? I, the revenues, we've, we've tried everything that we can to come up with our revenues. But in effect, this decision has pretty much already been made. I don't agree with that. Well, I mean, there's been conversation. There's been a lot of conversation. There's been uh, fact, trying to gather information to make an informed decision. Um, unfortunately, when, when conversation starts, things escalate. Um, talks escalate. Uh, most of them are not factual. But again, do you have any other solution or ideas for us? Fortunately, I don't have a money tree that I can come up with to increase the revenue to, to combat what the situation is. I do know that I have grave concerns about the operational of the lockup, and I fear that in a couple of years under this scenario, we'll be paying the same or more. But that's based off my experience, based off the input of the contact, content experts that do the job on a daily basis and have done it for years. I, I, I think it's a roll of the dice to do it. And I think we could see in a couple of years where we're having to pay north of what we're already expending but that doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't solve the revenue problem. I, Sheriff, do you have any it's ideas? It's not an easy conversation, right? I don't at this, at this point. Anything to help us? Commissioners, Commissioner Wilty. Um, <clears throat> another item that we have to think about is, you know, one of our revenue sources currently is with the County of Oscoda. And, you know, they're paying attention closely what's going on here. And, they see now that we really have staffing issues. They understand, you know, what millages have been looking like and how the direction of millages have been heading, especially for, <clears throat> excuse me, this county. You know, they've got to protect their best interests. And, um, you know, we lose that revenue. Plus, we're trying to wait for a millage that I like to be optimistic in things, but... Um, It's, it's just, it's not good. It's not good. I, I was really hoping to see if there were some other options that we could try to figure out. We've, we've tried many different things, talking to people. We had our state rep came in this week, just to look at every different avenues. If there's anything from the state that could possibly help us out. You know, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, but um, I, I just think Right now, with especially the staffing issue, I mean, the sheriff and the under sheriff stated if one person tomorrow would come to them and say, Hey, I took a different job, I'm out of here in two weeks, we would have to do emergency situation and start shipping out inmates. Not a good situation. Commissioner Scott. We passed the resolution to start negotiations. We have a, in seven days, we have a negotiation date. Let's get going on this thing. If this was private business, well, all this stuff would be in a boardroom and nobody would have known the damn thing. It's public. Once it goes public, people react to it, whether it's news, good news, bad news, or whatever. It doesn't matter. The thing is, the bottom line is, is the county as a whole has an issue with the money. We have to do something. We keep throwing this stuff out. We, we tried Headley. We tried this. We There's not, I just don't see, I just don't see this big tidal wave of money come pouring in for it. We're, we're, we're fatiguing. We talk about voter fatigue constantly. And it's not just in Ogemaw County. It's across the country. People are tired of paying taxes and they're paying more. And we're, I think what we're doing, I think we're putting a lot of local 
tax issues by by rolling out these big a, a questions like jail millage, two point seven mills. I think what you're doing is 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 some of these townships have some fire millages and EMS millages and and road millages, and they're going to get voted down because the county keeps blasting them with more choices. <clears throat> We got a way to do this and we can make it happen. We're not closing the jail, we're repurposing it. It's a lockout, lockdown, or lock, lock up. <laughs> up, down, out, I don't know. Anyway, it's a lock, it's a lock up. It's a lock we up. have to statutorily have it. We have a plan to do it. We can make this happen. That's your opinion? Yep. Commissioner May. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm sure Sheriff Grace is, is looking at this video uh, from Oscoda. So he is probably, what he's hearing tonight, he's probably going to be actively looking to move his inmates, I would assume. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him. I'm going to give him a courtesy call tomorrow morning. And uh, um, I, I would adventure that he's probably going to start just based on this conversation tonight. Well, I, I'm going to disagree. Um, I agree. It's a very intense conversation. It's a very uncomfortable conversation. And now it's time for, I'm going to state my opinion. Um, I think that this millage and this decision impacts the entire county. Um, whether it's a relative in jail, hopefully not myself in jail, but this impacts all the resident, or majority of residents of, of, of Oklahoma County. This is a huge decision. I I think we need to make a decision, but we have we don't even have numbers. We don't we we just approve for further talk with Rest Common County. They have not come to us with a number. There's been no decisions made. And as far as people leaving, you know that that's up to them. Um, my office has been in crisis at times. Um, if if people want to leave, they leave. That's their their right, their opinion. But I don't feel like a decision has been made. Yes, there's been a lot of talk. I but we don't have all the facts or all the numbers or even a for sure that Roscom is in. We don't know the, the comparison cost of housing. I, I wanna see it apples to apples in writing. Um, I, and, I, and I do feel very strongly about a millage. I think this is a very big decision that impacts residents of Ogemaw County that I, I, I want their input on. We make the ultimate decision, but I would like to see this uh, go in front of voters. Um, do I agree with these figures, this, this large 2.2, 2 point, um, no. Um, but I would like to see it on November. Um, I understand we would have to cover the cost from November, uh, October, November, and December, but we've been covering it for 12 months, not just three. I understand we'll have to make budget adjustments. We do that every month. Um, that's my that's that's my opinion on this. So I keep threatening, coming and threatening that people are leaving. It, it is what it is. Um, it's unfortunate. I understand job security, everything else, but uh, that's up to them. Maybe nothing will happen at all. We we don't know. No decision has been made. Mr. Mayhew, I'm, I, everything you say, I believe. I mean, in the wood business. When it's going good, they everybody wants to cut wood. When it's going bad, that's the time to get in. Because if you can make it one time to tough, it's easy when it's good. And we got the same thing here. It, it ain't fun and it ain't easy. But we've had all this stuff before. I was a commissioner. Less money, less taxes, and they still had all the stuff. And they managed to do it. I don't know how. But somehow they did it all. <clears throat> and I hate to lose it all just because I'm a commissioner that don't know nothing. I mean, I try. We, 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 we've asked people to help us and, and come with ideas, and they don't. And we don't know what you do. We don't know what any of the people do. But we have to make a decision. And we ask. And I'm sure we get left at, but it's, I just can't see throwing everything away. The tougher it gets, the more we have to work. 
<clears throat> but that's leaving us in a very difficult position when there's no other options coming forward. I, I know. I mean, they're sad. They know if one or two more go, they're, they're shut down. Try not to let it happen. Commissioner Simmons. Yeah, I think uh, there's no, no sense putting the millage on. I think people would think, what's wrong with them? You can look at us like you need an evaluation of some sort of thing. And the other small millages didn't pass. A two point whatever millage will never pass. And if there is a millage uh, to put on, it has to be big enough to cover the cost. I don't want to put a band aid on it. And we're right back here two years from now because the cost of it, the cost of everything goes up again. And we're back right where we are to begin with. I think uh, to me, it looks like the sinking of the Titanic. When I was commissioner before, I wanted to do this before and I got a lot of pushback. And I told people then, this is what's going to happen if we don't close that jail. And here we are. So just a thought. But if that if, if something doesn't happen here, you probably have the state come in and take over because we will not have any money. We don't have any money now. If we didn't have the special funds, we wouldn't be able to pay our bills. That's all I gotta say. We don't have any money. And then we use October, November, December, the money we could have saved. That money's gone. And the millage doesn't pass, that money's gone, plus the millage didn't pass. So here we go. So I guess the Just question for air. I'm sorry. Any other comments before I ask? No, I just I got one more. Go ahead. Um, listening to Commissioner Mayhew, I, I see where where he was getting at, but the problem that we have is, and I've been in many businesses and I've had ups and downs and the times where things get really, really tough, but you still have a little bit of leverage. Maybe have a little bit of money in the bank. You still have got some, you know, real promising things that can come down the line if you just hold on. You know, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know when the tide's going to change. More people start going to jail. <clears throat> the bottom line is, is we're completely broke. We have negative cash. We're 83rd out of 83rd. The state's calling us. We have zero leverage. We have nothing left. We have to make some really, really hard decisions to get this county where it needs to be. And it has to happen now. And I would back and forth, like just because how hard I did want to fight because I didn't want to close the jail. I wanted to look into every single option, talk to every single person I could see if we could do something. Um, I, I'm not in support of the millage. Sheriff, founder sheriff told us today where they're at over there in corrections. It's real. I'm not in support of the millage. No to the millage, Commissioner Scott. No, no, I thought I made that clear. I wanted to make it clear once more time. Okay. I am in favor of a millage. Commissioner Mayhew. I'm sorry. Or two. Commissioner Simmons. No, I'm not. Sure. Okay, so we will not see that uh, on, for a resolution on Thursday. <coughs> Did you guys have anything else that was uh, staffing issues and the jail millage? How about the candidate for deputy? So the, the first candidate is set for the 13th at uh, Delta. Uh, both of them are in discussions with Michigan Works finalizing their uh, what they qualify for is the different staffing, Penny and, and uh, oh, what's her name? Gene. Gene. Sorry. I mean, vapor lock okay. there. So both of them are working through uh, with each of the candidates. So the second candidate is the one to go to Traverse City. Uh, that one starts on the 26th. He would be a new hire. So we're just notifying you that at the time uh, he would start employment with the county on the 25th and he would start at the academy first day of work on the 26th. So per the process, we're just notifying you in that. So we're finalizing the stuff. He, uh, that candidate was at Michigan Works today at two. So I'm hoping to hear exactly what Michigan Works, will, you know, which how they're going to fund different aspects of it. One thing I like about the conversation with, because we still haven't got the MCOL's answer, uh, MCOL sends a check to the county and then the county pays for the training. So I haven't seen a check yet for the first person, but Michigan Works also has different banks that they pay for training costs and then salary costs. And so they have some flexibility on where they move stuff around to cover it. So 
really you're, you're asking us right now for our blessing to go ahead with the, the with the hire of the Traverse City as as our structure is they can uh, uh, department head can come to uh, uh, committee as a whole and get a, a consensus. This is to hire this individual that you're sending to training. Is there a position open? Yes. Yes, it'll be filling one of the two vacancies. So this is two vacancies being filled for that. Um, so we paid them while they go to school. What you're saying, paid them the salary. Right? Michigan Works would cover some of that. That's why I'm waiting to, to hear what the final funding is going to come through Michigan Works. They have certain banks that go towards salary and expenses, and they have other banks that go towards the actual training costs themselves of the academy. And again, if we get the MCOL's retention and recruitment money, they will cover that cost of the actual training academy itself. So we'll get a check from MCOL's on that. Who are you talking to at Michigan Works? Hmm? Who are you having communication with at Michigan Works? Penny and Jean. Penny and I Jean heard you say Penny, ones. I'm sorry. Yeah, Penny and Jean are the ones that are working with these two recruits. And, you know, there's the process of testing and identifying, you know, where they qualify for different types of things. So they have all kinds of different pots that they pull from. I, I don't pretend to understand what they're doing in their internal workings, but we've been very successful with them before. One of our deputies was paid during FTO. Another deputy had the training paid for, so they, they really work well and hard for these type of scenarios. And I understand that there are two totally, and I probably shouldn't state this, but we just got done with the previous conversation. I guess we don't know what the, the near future holds, but is there going to be a position for this candidate when he's done? Yeah, this is real patrol millage. So yes, that's that's this is all covered. Yeah. I understand. That's what I said, but I wanted to verify that. Well, we've had the two vacancies, the one, no, two resignations, what they were. Okay. Thanks, guys. Anything yeah. else you want to add? Thank you. I have one more question. Go ahead. Um, I know you've had good luck with this before, but what happens if we don't have the good luck and this money doesn't come through, then what do we do? Well, millage money would be used to, to pay. Uh, uh, these are positions that are currently vacant. So the, like the salary, let's say that one of the two salaries. Salary, would come, so what about one of the academies? Well, we would have to absorb that in the millage money. If M. Coles was dried up and didn't give us anything and Michigan Works didn't pay for the actual training academy, then we would have to fix that in our millage budget to cover those costs. I don't, I don't see that happening based on my conversations with Michigan Works. All right. That's why I reported that both Penny and they they were talking a couple of different scenarios. And again, I'm okay. not I part of the employee, yeah. but what well, we've always Mich gotten <clears throat> M. Coles has always come through but there's always that small, small doubt. Small yeah, team. Michigan but, Works is, is pretty. But right now, there's just not much hiring of police officers all over the state. So M. Coles is sitting on top of this money, you know, and they're going to want to spend it because the the governor's not going to give it to them next time because they're not hiring that many. Michigan, We're hiring. Michigan but, Works is solid. Just stay in communication. Michigan Works is solid. Yeah. Well, M. Coles is, M. Coles is good shape. Well, and this I, is the I, end of the fiscal year for them. So right. they're, they're running out of their allocation for this particular program. So we're at the tail end of it with these two recruits. Yeah. So yeah. there's a percentage chance that our second one might right. not get M Coles because it's already taken up. I don't think that's the case. I mean, toll it's not until I see the check. Yeah, right. Just just keep us updated. All right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Thank you. Fiscal 2025 budget review. So we... Um, have updated budgets located on your iPad and as well as I've printed some out for you here. I did uh, make an attempt at a position allocation list. Unfortunately, as we were looking at those at the law enforcement committee, there's a glaring error. So go ahead and discard those. I will repost those tomorrow so you see them. The uh, other document that's posted that you didn't have before is a list of fund balances as of the end of the last fiscal year for all of our funds. So you'll be able to see that when we're talking about, um, uh, like the child care fund, occasionally we talk about fund balances. You'll see that um, number as of the end of the last fiscal year. And you can always look at the quarterly adjustment report that we did and find out where we stand right now and add or subtract from that number. 
The budget uh, for general fund, there was uh, one omission on there that's corrected. Uh, in the, it to be in the jail budget, uh, there was an intention to include uh, funding for uh, on-call transport officers at 30,000. So that's put back in there. That's, that's up to me. And you'll see on the uh, handouts and you'll see on what's posted online, you'll have the current date. So these are August 1st and those are the most current. So if you have a copy of something that has a different date on it, you can go ahead and discard that. Um, otherwise, um, you know, no changes on there. You just see the, uh, the figures as they're recommended. I did change some of the language to match the statute. What I presented to you is a recommended budget. So I changed the title on that column, uh, but otherwise you, no, no other changes. Um, I would note, um, just because it's on there, on some of those on the board approved, you see zeros are showing up. Or those are numbers, particularly on the revenue side for the general fund. Uh, those are dependent on transfers from other funds. So, for instance, we have, um, I have to look at one, remind, or remind myself, oh, uh, uh, concealed uh, pistol licensing. We did uh, program uh, 10,000 to offset some of the clerk's charges in there. You see a zero on the board approved because you haven't approved anything yet, but um, it's also there to uh, just make sure that it's not um, forgotten at some point. So as soon as that number is entered into that fund, it will automatically enter its fund to the general fund too, so it matches everything in balance. Other than that, nothing new. Um, I don't know if there are any specific departments that you want to have uh, meetings with. Um, you know, we can certainly arrange those. Um, we are, um, you know, pretty well set now for any kind of discussions you want to have or any other alternatives you want to consider. Um, I, I think we've uh, worked this as just at the staff level as much as we can. <clears throat> it's not going to come down to any different priorities that you might want to have programmed in. But you had a department head meeting and went over this correctly? We did or, that, and we had a budget committee meeting again last week and uh, really hit the special funds and went over those. Uh, also talked about the situation with corrections and where we stand. I thought, you know, again, good meeting, good, uh, <coughs> good minds around that table to offer suggestions and comment. Um, so we're just at the point now of fine tuning. Was there any department heads that? Uh, really didn't agree with the recommended budget? Yeah, there weren't any any voice and nobody likes the situation we're in. I think I can say that in general, um, but uh, overall, I, I don't recall any, nobody standing up and saying we oppose this or you know, think it's something else. There are a couple of other positions that are not included in the 25 budget that you may want to discuss. One of those obviously being animal control, uh, this budget also uh, does uh, drop one custodian position as well, uh, so that that's a change, and that that you know that, again has caused some unease. But you know, we're just trying to get ourselves um, uh, on firm financial footing, and that's just one of the recommendations. I have a question. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, we get rid of one custodian, then that means um, the two remaining people will be doing the same kind of job. And cleaning the bathrooms and scrubbing the floors and stuff like this. Right. They both got to do it. Otherwise, you're going to have a very messy looking building because it's you know it's here across the street. It's the annex. Uh, it's a it's a lot of area for would be for one person. It's not area really for two people. So I, I just want to make sure that that individual knows that, that what that means. Right. Right, so the, the other position is titled uh, maintenance supervisor slash custodian. So the custodian duties are already uh, listed as functions that, that he's responsible for, but he would have to reallocate more of his time for those custodial functions uh, over the maintenance function. I, mean, I, I guess I want to be clear on that because I, I, I uh, especially during the winter months and, and when things really start to illnesses really peak, I mean, do you really truly feel that two people can can adequately clean, sanitize one, two, three, three, four, five buildings? they doing it now. You have three. We're oh. talking, we're taking it down to two. Yeah. Do I keep my three phone? to two? How about contracted? There is there some duties that, that yeah, I, my, my question wasn't answered. Okay. And then I'll, I'll give you the floor. Do I think it can be adequately done? I mean, 
I like the term that the Supreme Court used. Um, you know, was it uh, just barely functional? Yeah, I think we're barely functional by dropping uh, the, the one position. Um, it will not be done as well as it is today. I mean, just uh, the, the arithmetic doesn't work on that in terms of the time and the other duties that are needing to be done. So no, um, I, you know, it's certainly not. It is, but like I said, barely functional. Um, if you want to um, consider putting that uh, position back in, I'm just looking at where the budget is this year versus last year. We're probably looking at uh, in the neighborhood of... Uh, probably 60 to 70,000 put back in the budget to uh, continue that position. That's a conversation that's absolutely legitimate at this point um, in, you know, kind of thing, kind of conversation that you may want to have. If you believe that's something that cannot be reduced, then let's put it back in the recommended budget. Mr. Scott. Is there some job duties of the, of the, uh, the maintenance department that can be uh, farmed out as contractors? Can we have, I mean, this is, a, I, I guess I'm asking the rest of the four of you, not asking Tim. Tim already knows the answer. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's lawn services all over the county that can cut all the grass. There's, uh, there's window washers. There's, there's all, there's all kinds of things that if a person needs more time to clean the bathroom, instead of cutting the grass, they'll get somebody that cuts grass. I guess with the three full-time individuals, which that last one was hired, how long ago? It hasn't been that long ago. It was it'll be a little... 2020, I think. That we oh, has it been that long? It was for COVID. It might have been 21. It was COVID. Yeah, we, it had was, to, we had to bring somebody back full-time for COVID. Has there been any... Um, COVID sense? There was a lot of concerns prior to that about things not being kept up, um, things sure. not being fixed sure. in various sure. buildings. Yeah. Is Unfortunately, there... that predates me so <laughs> wasn't here to hear those things. Has there been any concerns about things not being kept up with the three full-time individuals? Um, not, not that I would say are consistent. I mean, sometimes, you know, maybe something is overlooked and it's pointed out, but there's been nothing that I would point to to say we're, we're falling short here. Um, I know that they have their routines that they do every day. And, you know, those, those routine jobs, the bathrooms being cleaned and things of that nature are happening. Um, you know, could they use the additional help with all the buildings are covered? Well, everybody can use additional help, but I think they've gotten it down to a point where they're able to keep up with everything pretty consistently. Uh, and I've heard no complaints in that regard as far as you know, the work that is getting done. Commissioner Wiltsey? Um, so on a daily basis, our two custodians, who do they go to? Who is supervising them? I know ultimately it's you, but on right. a day-to-day -day basis, who are they talking to for directions, for immediate questions? Is it Chris? Actually, it's me. Um, and like when we do the uh, orders, and we do orders generally once a month for supplies, um, that list of needs is brought right to me. Uh, luckily, when we had Kelly here and Mary before her, they set up, uh, uh, and actually set up programs, but set up procedures uh, to where that's a pretty simple thing for me to do. So if they come in, we need paper towels, You know, we, I know where to go to get that. Uh, I know where to go to look at pricing to see if somebody's got a better price than someone else. So, yeah, that's all done with me. And when they do have questions, uh, wintertime's a good good example. When there is a you know a large amount of salt being tracked in, there may be some alterations that we talk about. Okay, how are we going to take care of this, and uh, what are we going to do, you know, to take care of it? So that's actually worked out well. But the fact is, we've also created the checklist that they do. They're pretty well self-sufficient. They know when the floors have to be mopped. They know, you know what the bathrooms have to be done every day. So it's so routine that there aren't that many questions that come up where they need to break the routine. Right, well, occasionally, something happens. Something breaks or, or, or what have you. And we deal with those when they come up. Um, so, so obviously, it'd be a seniority thing who's, who would get let go. Um, so have you talked to... So Chris would be the highest senior. So he would right. have you talked to him that what his new job functions would be because he would be have to clean bathrooms. Mm -hmm. He would have to take on jobs that the current, um, you know, position detailed. Right. I mean, have you talked about that? And he's he's aware of it. He's willing to do that. He's aware of it. I assume he's willing. He isn't. He's unwilling. Uh, but if this uh, appears to be the direction we're headed, um, and you know. 
obviously give the board time to have conversation about this, but we will take a look at the daily routines that everyone is doing and make sure that the important things are covered. So his daily routine will change. Uh, there may be other things he may not be able to do as quickly. Maybe the lawn we talked about, you know, cutting grass. Maybe the grass isn't cut as often as it was, or maybe it's rotated differently. But the other board has to get done. The bathrooms have to be cleaned every day. If there's a situation in the, that develops, uh, uh, say, in the courts where there's some kind of cleanup that has to happen, he's got to be available to do that. So it will mean an adjustment to what he's used to doing. But again, it is part of the job description he has right now. So it isn't anything that's out of line for us to ask. It's just going to be a different routine. Commissioner Simmons? Yeah. As far as the lawn goes, when you talk about different routines, I mean, you could contract it out. Um, I mean, it takes me forever to do my lawn in an hour. They've got my lawn cut and gone. So that's what I'm thinking. That maybe they look at clean, cleaning services for the other buildings. This building, for instance, they don't have to come all the way over here to have a cleaning service come in. There's not as many people in this building constantly during the day as there is in the county building. Um, I can't remember when I first started, uh, their shifts were different over there too, I think. Yes, they were. They had later evening shifts. And then it was COVID. COVID made us bring them in at eight o'clock in the morning because it had to be cleaned then. Um, it was easier to clean when, when there was nobody in the building. It was a lot easier to clean to clean offices when there was nobody, no traffic in the in the office. I mean, that just makes sense. Or hallways. Or hallways, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, at nine o'clock in the morning, I mean, if the place is clean, what are they doing? Clean and clean. You know, can more can we get if more work done efficiently at a different schedule? I think you're right. I think you ought to ask the question. I think that's it's, that, it's that kind of job that 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 it hinders when there's people in the building. I I think some of the job duties I don't disagree with, like like cleaning the floors, but I I'm going to disagree with this the statement. I think this is a both buildings are very very high traffic. All, all the buildings, um, uh, and a clean work environment is extremely important. Uh, for numerous reasons. I'm not in favor of this position being um, cut. Um, I don't disagree with with uh, knowing individuals' job duties, maybe expanding them. That I, I don't know. I think that's micromanaging. I don't think that's our job. Um, but I think three people cleaning all of these buildings um, is very much necessary. Uh, COVID influenza, uh, there's lots of stuff that is still around that will continue to be around. Um, keeping things very clean is extremely important to me. Uh, and safe, well, whether it's in the middle, I'm, I'm not done. Go ahead. Thank you. Whether it's in the middle of winter, um, salting, um, I, I think this also comes back to a liability uh, for the public and for county employees. So I am not in favor of, of cutting. I think three people cleaning all of these buildings is extremely reasonable. And with all of the departments already short staffed, um, yeah, pick up your work environment. I think we all have enough respect to do that, but to come down right deep cleaning it, I don't think we should be asking the employees to do that. I don't do my own workplace. I don't. I, I don't think that they should do theirs. Let me draw up that scenario so you can see what that number is. Uh, and I say it's not going to be you know huge, and um, you can then discuss it from that level of knowledge. You'll see what we're talking about with dollars, and are you willing to do it? And from there. Any other comments? Yep. Go ahead. In your words, we don't have all the numbers. Then right. let's find out how much it costs to have a custodial service come in here contracted to us. You can do that. That's a that's flat a, rate. That's a fair request. No overtime, no bennies. I don't have all the numbers. I'd like to do that with uh, grass cutting too. Well I think we should look at it for even the maintenance side of things. You know? I agree. We've talked about that for a while now. Then we have facts. I think we're gonna be shocked by the amount of uh Differences, but we don't know till we try. It's a valid, that's a valid request. Uh, handicap accessibility. Oh, do I'm sorry. Do we have anything else on the 2025 budget review? Tim, do you have any? When does the budget committee meet again? Yeah, I think a week. 
the 9th at 9 a.m. What is the deadline on approving this? Your last uh, regular meeting in September, the date escapes me, but that fourth Thursday, I think it's the 25th. Are you having a department head meeting again? There'll be one uh, this month and one in September yet. Um, you, the, the real obligation we want to make sure we hit is the obligation to actually have a public hearing on the budget, which you can do at any time you know, between now and September. It doesn't have to be uh, when you actually adopt the budget, but that gives the public an opportunity to come in and comment on uh, where things sit. It's commonly done uh, on the same day that you're going to approve it so that um, people uh, have a you know, reasonable expectation that when they've had their public comment that if you're going to do something, you'll do it and you'll adopt it. But there isn't, uh, you know, any magic to, you know, can that happen a week later or a week before? Yeah, I mean, it can happen anytime between now and the end of September. September 26th. Okay, that's close. Any further discussion, Commissioners? Not right now. Commissioner Scott? No. Nope. Mr. Mayo? Uh, handicap accessibility. Commissioner Scott? I came into the building the other day and a resident was coming in the building in a wheelchair and I met him right there at the back door and held the door open for him and he had some he had some issues getting in the, the first door and he wanted to know who he talked to and I told him you can just go ahead and talk to me about it and uh, he was a little upset and I don't blame him it was difficult for him to get in We've talked about this in the past. I think it's time we start moving on it. I mean, I didn't did not like to see him have that much problem getting in. Uh, we once I got through security and everything, he looked at me and he says, "Oh, you're Commissioner Scott," and he knew my son from high school, and it was okay. We were okay by the time we got around the corner of the corridor. So. But no, he's got a valid point, and I think we need to really look at that. That was that was difficult for his thing, and and he did, he had a motorized chair, but it wasn't as big as some of those other ones I've seen. That was kind of a smaller one, but he still had an issue there. And um, we have more than enough space there. That that center panel there is just useless. Uh, easily, two larger doors could be there. And then uh, I talked to Tim a little bit, and and they get the automatic opener too. Um, yep. Yeah. And and a, and a handicapped bathroom. I think Judge Williams actually brought that to us a year or so ago. Um, that's pretty crucial. Well, you guys don't want to spend ARP on anything else, so let's start spending on that then. Well, I don't know if that comment was necessary, but well, uh, yeah, it was. I think yeah, it was. To, I think we need yeah, to move comment. I need, think we need to move uh, forward. It has been discussion. Um, move forward with with pricing and definitely moving forward with this. Agreed, Commissioner Simmons. Yeah, I have a comment. Because the bathrooms in this building are not there's not one accessible. And in the annex building, they're not handicap accessible either. So we redid that building and we don't have handicap accessible bathrooms. The doors are handicap accessible, correct? No, you can't get in the bath. You can't get go to the toilet unless you do it in the middle of the floor by the sink. I don't know the door, the entrance coming in. Is that handicap accessible? It's, it's wide enough. No, there's no, there's no push button. You gotta push it open. And you can't get into the bathroom to go to the toilet. Jenny at the door there are because I use them here when I have there is carry in my bag. Handicap bags. accessible. I I I are they here? Push button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the outside right. doors. Yeah. Well, go inside and see a wheelchair and turn around in there to get. Yes. I, I don't think we we didn't re reconstruct the bathrooms. We did not touch the bathrooms. We painted, I believe, in the bathrooms. We did not do any reconstruction in the bathrooms themselves. And I understand that, but they should be handicap accessible in this building. Hey. I don't disagree. Right now, we're talking about the the count that that could be next on our our agenda. Right now, I think the county building because this was brought to us about a year ago, definitely for a handicap entrance along with a handicap bathroom. This is handicap. Is that something Brian could? Is that something Brian could help us with? I I don't know. I don't know if he could. Uh, he could tell us the codes or not. He can tell us the codes. He can tell us the codes, but I don't know if he could provide us pricing. I would think that Brian could help quarterback to, you know, okay, we get a list Resources. of contractors and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we got to have an itemized outlook of what the job is going to detail. 
that may take someone with, you know, that type of knowledge, but Brian, I mean, I'm not trying to talk for him, but you know, I would hope that he would be willing to quarterback this. Oh, I'm sure he would. Yeah. And has resources of Mr. Simmons. And with the people that are in uh, the building department, like our electrician and stuff, and, our, and Brian, they cannot do any any work because of the position they have. They can't be a contractor, you know, going, right. you know, and that can be included here. So, just a thought. But they could help us with the resources and connections and ideas and thoughts and they at least start that, yeah. heading us in the right direction. They so can, can we continue to put this on the Committee of the Whole until we have a plan so yeah. this isn't dropped? Good. <clears throat> what, one quick comment. Go ahead. I think that'd be a great opportunity too I would get some of these contractors and we could also get a little more of analysis of, of the building itself. And I think we know for sure we have some seals on windows that need to be redone and you know, those actually are really not that very expensive of fixes. It's just a matter of, you know, identifying which seals need to be fixed and, and, and then getting quotes for the job. And, you know, that, that will help us with utility costs. And so I think it'd be a good time to also, you know, look into uh, into those areas as well. I think that probably be a temporary fix, maybe. It's a start, having somebody really look at that. Temporary okay. fix of what? Just clocking around, that just be a temporary fix. The windows are in bad shape. I, will. I guess I can't really say if they're okay. need to be replaced or not, but we know that they're seal issues. Contractor could definitely look at them and, and give us an opinion. Mr. Mayhew? Yeah, I thought the front door was handicapped accessible in the building. Here? There. At the county building? Yes. I don't think it is. I don't think it's wide enough. I don't think it is either. I, I think the way that what you call it that that's it's not wide enough the front one ain't either eh? i don't think that, so that support between the doors that's there it makes it so the doors themselves aren't wide enough I, i'm just seeing this based on perspective as i'm walking in there i don't think they are but like commissioner scott, scott said there's you know that was just reconfigured you know different type of door with the push button i think we could get i think there's enough room to make it accessible Okay, more to come on that. Then why don't they put it up for bond or for bids? That's what we're going to do. Okay. That's what we're, we're talking about. Got to gotta find out what we're going to bid first. Yep. Brian's going to give us some ideas of, of what to do moving forward, but that will be the direction okay. we're headed. Uh, DDA. Uh, we got some emails this week back and forth. Um, I'm assuming all the commissioners got that. First of all, I yes. want to thank Commissioner Wiltsy for taking the lead on this. I think he's uh, definitely dealt uh, pretty detail into this. So. Do you have anything to add, Tim? Well, a very positive reply yesterday from the West Branch Township DDA. Was it chair, president? Uh, uh, president. President. Um, they had already, just the night before, had passed some kind of a resolution or motion that says they will not collect new millage, new special millages uh, that, that are approved. Um, I, I want to follow up on that with him because it would be helpful to actually have that in the form of an interlocal agreement that they would say that. And that's something that I know the Treasury and Equalization Director have been working on as well uh, to do something like we've done with Oklahoma Township and the city of Rose City, where they've all agreed not to collect the special millages. Uh, I think that will help. Uh, at least ease the concerns that Commissioner wiltsey has been hearing, and I've heard them too. You know, it's just a fact right now, and a lot of times I don't think these things are thought about when DDAs are established and what all they can capture. Uh, but it's good to hear that cooperation from West Branch Township, and let's take the next steps and get it formalized. Yeah, they just added that. I was really pleased to see that um, the president of the West Branch Township took this very seriously because he did himself see that there was a lot of residents that were not happy with this, that were not aware of this happening. And they, you know, they on themselves brought on a special meeting and made the right decision. So it's good to see that. And I hope the same uh, follows course with the West Branch City DDA. Who is the, who is the West Branch Township DDA president? West Branch Township, it's Bob Griffin. So just to be clear, because through the, all those emails, right now, Oklahoma Township and the city of Rose City have agreed to not collect on the special millages. We're waiting to hear back on West Branch Township and the city yeah, that yeah. they will follow follow lead and, and also agree to not collect. Right. Correct? It sounds like West Branch Township has already taken an action. It's a step in that direction. It said in the email, new millages. So, correct. Um, yeah, but there, there may be reason for that. And, and we need to have that conversation. They may have obligated... Uh, 
uh, maybe obligating money to bonds or something like that where they couldn't just go cold turkey, but we'll have to have that conversation. I don't know enough about what they're doing to know if they have anything like that hanging out there. And I appreciate the information that was uh, provided to us as far as how much money that they do collect out of those millages. So that was a lot of good information. So thank you. Uh, Commissioner comments. Commissioner Scott. No, I have no. Commissioner Wilty. Uh, we just got a law enforcement meeting. I think we pretty much have covered the main uh, points of that. Other than that, this is the time right now. I just got a lot of stuff coming up uh, starting next week. So um, but we did uh, one thing I would like to add. We did have a special meeting today um, with the EMS. And there's some, some items there that we're working on um, for the, the director position of uh, moving forward. Uh, the DMS is going well. Morale out there is, is well. And uh, we're going to make some good, strong decisions and, and find a new EMS director that will continue on this past year, which has been a success. Um, it was good to see today at our meeting. We had, uh, I believe it was an emergency RN nurse. I took time out of her day to come to the meeting to um, pretty much tell the board that she has seen over the course of this last year major improvements with communication between the EMS and the hospitals, and that was one item that we really wanted. So, and there was some other, you know, some other items that uh, we heard good positive word on. So, a lot of good positive things going out there. Uh, we got a little setback right now, but we're going to continue to work hard to get the right people in place and continue to move forward with. Uh, real good things did the director take a position um in house is is he uh, at our at our last meeting he um his his um his contract is coming up excuse right. me and uh he told us that he was not interested in renewing it so so is he going to go back to working the floor he's going to be leaving the agency oh he is okay uh, commissioner simmons any comments? Yeah, there was a meeting at the airport today. We had the uh, the state uh, office of um, aeronautics, aeronautics there today, doing the planning for the upcoming um, redoing of the uh, runway and also future projects over the next five years, and tying up loose loose strings there about who needs to contact who and. What, what our uh, manager has to do. And he has a lot of work to do to make sure all those things come together. So uh, I'm glad we have been. That's all I can say, because he's very knowledgeable. So yeah, so what's going on is August 12th is my understanding is starting and then right after Labor Day, it, it should be complete. So they're looking at hangers, they're looking at a lot of things for, for the five-year plan out there. So it was interesting. Any comments, Mr. Mayo? No. I have none. Uh, public comment. Any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? We have a closed session. Does anyone want to make a motion to go into closed session? I'll make a motion to go into closed session based on uh, oh, don't have the uh, MCL there. Collective <laughs> embargement under MCL 15.2681. That's the one. That's the one. I'll second. Anyway. Yep. We have a motion uh, with support. Roll call. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Charles Lester. Yes. We have a motion to go into closed session. Employer people are invited to stay here. Any any co-employers, department heads are welcome to stay. It's a labor issue. So right up here, so way back there. Actually, the attorney is going to walk you through this. They just got to hand out all the papers. Okay. Have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Yep. Report all in favor. Say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. We are adjourned at seven thirty-six. Thanks, guys. Good night, everyone. Have a good night. Safe. These are our books. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.